ለዩነት መፍጠር አላማችን ነው አለም አቀፍ ተወዳዳሪ መሆን አለባችሁ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ጥራትና ደረጃውን የተጠበቀ ስልጣና በመስጠት ብቁ ዜጋ ያፈራ ነው በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ በቲኬቲንግና ሪዘርቬሽን በሆቴልና ቱሪዝም ሙያዎች አስልጥነን ተወዳዳሪና አድርጎታለን ኮሌጃችን ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር ዓለም አቀፍ ቁጥና ያለው ስልጣና እየሰጠ ይገኛል በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ የምንሰጣቸው ስልጣና ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪዬሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉ ቁጥና አለ አድራሻ ከጎላጉል ታወር 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስደው መንገድ ላይ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እድ ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ህልሞን እሁን ያደርጋል ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የተጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁን መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምህራን እየተማራችሁ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ሶ አባጌጅ ኢዝ ዲፋይንድ አስ አርቲክልስ ኢፌክትስ ኦር አዘር ፐርሰናል ቢሎንግስ ኦፍ ዘ ፓሰንጀር that are used for their comfort and convenience during the journey so you notice that when it comes to baggage transportation it this is not internationally standardized because every airline has their own restrictions relating to baggage handling every airline set their own free baggage allowance and charges based on their commercial consideration so in general what you should know is baggage transportation is not internationally standardized the reason is every airline set their own conditions relating to how they transport their bags now except the dangerous goods the way baggages are handled what is permitted and the amount of luggage differs from country to country from airline to airline from class to class and between international to domestic routes the only standardized baggage is when you carry what you call dangerous goods because that one it has to be part the standards of the iata standard in terms of the security so any other bag that passengers transport abroad may the conditions may vary based on which airline they travel with so baggage allowances and conditions for kenya ways will not be similar to baggage allowance and conditions for it because these are two different airlines and they have their own ways of handling the baggages the amount of luggage that will enter ethiopia may not be similar to the amount of luggage will enter kenya because every country have their own restrictions relating to baggage handling so the key learning point here is very very simple the way baggage are cleared the way baggage are handled differs by the following airline to airline class to class the type of route that is international or domestic so you have to find out what does the rule says related to ethiopian airline baggage handling what the rule says regarding to kenya is baggage handling because it will never be the same so every airline set their own conditions relating to baggage handling now the information on this particular given module is only to guide you 
it does not give you the, the exact reflection in the industry, but it is there only to give us some kind of guidelines relating to the baggage handling. So, killer point, the baggage handling and transportation differs from airline to airline, from class to class, from international to domestic type of routes, and also between different countries. Except the dangerous goods, the transportation of dangerous goods, all other baggages, each airline will set their own conditions relating to their transportation. As I said, baggage are transported in two ways. Number one, you can transport a bag as unchecked luggage. In ticketing language, you normally call them cabin bags or handbags. Or you can transport your bag as a checked bag. This checked bag is a bag that is large. It is supposed to be re registered at the check-in counter, then taken away from you. So as a travel agent, it is your duty to advise your customers on how to transport their baggage when they're going to abroad. You should advise them, tell them the bags can be transported in two ways, either as a checked bag or unchecked bag. The difference between unchecked and checked is that unchecked bag is a bag that you will access it during the flight. You remain with it during the flight. You go with it in the cabin. You put it under, over here, under the seats or overhead lockers. In case you want to take something from the bag, you can easily take anything from the bag. So it's a bag that is accessible to the, pub, to the passenger during the flight. But when it comes to checked bag, it's a bag that is too large. It is registered at the check-in counter. Then it is taken away from the customer by what you call the hand baggage handlers. And it is normally transported in the aircraft hold. So each airline applies its own baggage allowance rules when it comes to these two sets of baggage. So the key learning point, you can transport your bags in two ways, either as a checked bag, a very large bag that is taken away, or unchecked bag, a bag that will be able to access it during the journey. So you have been told each airline establishes its own rules on what personal items passengers are permitted to travel with. So it is not internationally standardized because every airline sets their own rules and regulations in relation to the baggage, the passenger, or the items the passengers are allowed to take out of the country or to transport in a particular aircraft. So according to all these stories, you come up with five key learning points. Number one, a bag is anything you carry for your convenience. Number two, the way baggages are transported differs from airline to airline. Number three, you have been told the information here is only to guide you. It does not give you the real situation in the industry. It only guides us on how we can transport baggage. Then number four, the baggage are transported in two ways, either unchecked bag or checked bag. Number five, unchecked bag, it's a bag that you can access it during the flight. Where else, 
The checked bag is a bag that is too large and it will be taken away from you as a passenger and kept in the hold of the aircraft. You will only get that bag when you reach your final destination. So we as agents, we must make sure we give the information related to the bags to our passengers. Now let's look at unchecked bags, checked, unchecked baggage allowance. Now, in addition to the checked bag, airlines allows passengers to carry a smaller bag that can be stored in the aircraft's overhead compartment or lockers or under the seats. I will repeat. In addition to the checked bag, the big bags, airlines allows passengers to carry a smaller bag that can be stored in the aircraft's overhead compartments or lockers or under the passenger seat. This bag is sometimes referred to as cabin bag, carry-on bag, handbag, etc. So you can use any of the name. Unchecked bag, cabin bag, carry-on bag, or handbags. These bags remain with the passenger during the flight. So you notice that unchecked bag is a bag that remains with the passenger during the flight. And this bag is normally accepted free of charge. You don't have to pay for it to transport. But it is subject to the limit in terms of the quantity, what you are carrying into the bag, in terms of the dimension, the size of the bag, in terms of the weight of the bag. So you cannot say you are allowed to carry a checked bag and to carry a very big bag. You go with it in the aircraft. You will not be allowed. So you have been told unchecked bag is a smaller bag that you can carry in addition to the checked bag. And this bag, you remain with it in the aircraft. You can access it at any time but it is normally subject to the limitation in terms of the quantity, the dimension, the weight, and the content of the bag. And you notice that every airline has their own policies relating to this transportation of these bags. The policies will restrict the weight of the bag, the dimension of the bag, and the quantity, the quality of the bag. The general accepted dimension for these particular handbags, it has a maximum of 56 centimeters length, 45 centimeters width, and 25 centimeters depth or height. Anything more than that, it will be considered as a checked bag. But if you have a bag that is under that particular given dimension or lesser, then that bag is normally referred to as unchecked bag. Even though you can see the dimension tends to give you a very large size of the bag, these bags are also subject to the weight. And in most cases, every class of service will have a given weight size that you can carry as unchecked bag. Either 10 kg, if allowed, 15 kg, or even 5 kilo. So some airline may allow 5 kg, others may allow uh, 10 kg, while others we allow even 15 kg. 
So it is your duty as an agent to check and understand. Give your customers exact information relating to this type of bag. So, unchecked bag is a bag that is small enough that can be stored in the overhead compartment. It is referred to as a cabin bag, carry-on bag, or handbag. And this bag remains with the passenger during the flight. It is transported free of charge, but subject to the quantity, quality, dimension, and the weight limitation. So baggage in excess of what has been mentioned in terms of dimension must be transported as checked baggage in the aircraft hold. Any bag that is larger than the dimension given, then you have to consider it as a checked bag. So, as agents, it is your duty to consult the airline to try and find out their restrictions relating to the baggage allowance and to how they transport the bags for their passengers. So, that is all about the unchecked bag. So I've been told the weight limit for every bag may also vary from one airline to another. And this weight is between 6 kg to 23 kg. But of course, this one is too much. In most cases, airlines will allow you to carry up to 15 kilo as unchecked bag, not more than that. Even though I told you this information in this particular given module is only to guide you. It is not the exact reality in the industry. The reality in the industry is airlines may allow you to carry up to 15 kilo of a bag as unchecked bag. Anything more than that, it has to go in as a checked bag where it should be tagged, taken away from you, then you'll only meet your bag at your final destination. To some extent, this 15 kg or even 23 kg may only be allowed for passengers traveling in the higher class of service. In the higher class of service, then they'll be given a higher kg. Remember, people in first class, they don't carry so many goods, so many bags. They carry only one bag, a very small bag for their trip. But people who carry a lot of bags are passengers in the lower class of service, economy. So if you allow economy class passengers to carry a 23 kg unchecked bag plus the checked bag, you can imagine the number of bags the airline can be able to carry. So because of that, they restrict. They say if you're in economy class, you can carry seven kg up to 10 kg bag as unchecked. Then 23 kg bag as a checked baggage. Because the first class passengers may not have any other bag, they can carry this bag as the unchecked where the limit in terms of the kilo may be higher. So you have been told, it is important to check with the airlines to know what baggage allowance they offer to their passengers so that you can provide all the information you need to your customer. Now, airlines' primary concern is to ensure the high level of customer safety and comfort on board the aircraft. So because of that, they are strict 
on the limit on what can be transported in the unchecked bag. You cannot just pack everything in this particular unchecked bag. No. They have restrictions. Yes, they have allowed you to carry this bag, but they have to check so that they know what you have carried in these bags. So it is your duty to give a limitation to your customers on what should be transported in this bag. For example, anything to do with foodstuffs will not be allowed in that bag. Drinks may not be allowed because some drinks or some kind of perfumes may not be allowed in this particular given bag. Reason is some drinks or food may not be comfortable with other type of passengers. So because of that, they normally give a strict, a strict level of limit on what can be transported in this particular type of bags. So as an agent, it is your duty to check with the airlines so that you can be able to advise your customers on what they can be able to transport in these type of bags. Then you can see, you have been told, there are some limitations on some amount of liquid cream that can be transported in these bags. As I say, because of the security, the airline has to make sure their passengers are comfortable and secure while they are on board their aircraft. That's why they limit on some kind of cream you can carry. Gel, some kind of perfume, because remember, some perfumes are very dangerous. They are normally grouped under the dangerous goods. So because of that, they may not be allowed on board the aircraft. It has to be put under the checked bag so that it can be transported in the aircraft hold. So it is your duty as a travel agent to check with airlines and find out what are the items that are not allowed in this particular unchecked bag so that you can advise your customers on the same. Customers can buy a very expensive perfume. They can buy a very expensive perfume only to reach at the airport, they are told this perfume is not allowed on board the aircraft. It should be put in the checked bag. So to avoid such kind of incidents, it is your duty as an agent to check with the airline concerned, try to find out more on the baggage, and try to advise your customers on what they should be able to transport as a checked bag or unchecked baggage. Remember, the space on any aircraft is limited. So because of that, you should advise your customers to only carry the items that are necessary for their trip for any other thing that they may not need, they should pack it under the checked bag. So there are many occasions when there are still not enough room, even after you meet the size of the limitation of the bag. Therefore, it is wise to advise your customers to only pack items that they require during the flight in their handbags. Don't pack everything that you may not need at that time in your handbag because the space in any aircraft is normally limited. So agents, it becomes your duty to make sure you advise your customers accordingly relating to the baggage transportation. NB, key learning point. Unchecked bag 
or carry on baggage remains with the passengers and must be stored in the overhead compartment or under your seat on board the aircraft. Only one carry on bag is permitted per passenger. You may not carry three and you say these are my unchecked bag. No, you are only allowed to carry one checked bag, not more than one. The size of the checked bag and checked bag is limited to a maximum weight and size. Furthermore, a limited amount of liquid cream gels may be permitted in these particular given bags. So those are some of the things you need to take care of as a customer or as an agent to advise your customers on. Number two. Number two, we have checked bag allowances, checked baggage allowances. Now, the difference between these two bags is visible. As I said, checked bag is a bag that is large to be stored in the aircraft cabin. And because of that, it has to be tagged and taken away from the customer. Whereas, unchecked bag is a smaller bag that can be kept in the aircraft overhead compartment. Passengers are responsible for their handbags. You have to take care of your handbag. You cannot lose your handbag, then come and complain, like my handbag is missing. The airline has no responsibility when it comes to handbags. But when it comes to checked bag, these bags are under the airline responsibility. It is under the airline's care. The airline will be responsible for the safe transportation of these large bags. If you miss your bag, then you have all the right to check with the airline. So, you have been told, checked bag is a bag that is too large to be stored in the aircraft cabin. And because of that, it is transported in the, over, in the aircraft hold or planes under belly. The airline is responsible for the safe transportation of this particular type of bags. Now, each airline, as I said, sets its own baggage allowance, rules, and regulations, which include the maximum number of bags to carry, the weight and the size of the checked baggage. So it is your duty to make sure you advise your customers on the weight and the number of bags the airlines allow. If an airline allows two baggage, it will be shown as two pieces. So one bag is normally expressed in terms of the pieces. So if a bag, if an airline allows three bags, then it will show three pieces. If it, allow, it allows only one bag, it will show one piece. If it allows two bags, then it shows two pieces. So pieces reflect the number of bags accepted or allowed by an airline to be transported by each customer. So you have been told, in the air industry, the number of checked bags is normally expressed as pieces, and so on. Airlines that permit two bags will be expressed as two pieces. A bag size is normally expressed in terms of the length, width, and height the size of the bag, that is the dimension, three-dimensional type of bag. They'll be measured in terms of the height, length, 
and will. So a checked bag that measures 55 centimeters length, 35 centimeters width, and 22 centimeters height is normally considered as a dimension of 112 centimeters. So because of that, each airline will publish what is supposed to be permitted in those bags and what is prohibited in these bags, as well as the items that can substitute a checked bag. You cannot carry a musical instrument and you carry another bag and say you have one bag only. They normally give you the instructions. What can be can substitute a bag and which items are not allowed in these type of bags. The items consist of various sport equipment, musical instruments that may be used to substitute one of the bags, one of the pieces. So if an airline allows two pieces, you can carry one piece of the bag plus a guitar or one piece of bag plus a golf bag. So you can substitute one of the bags with any of the musical instrument, any of the sporting equipment that you may be able to transport into the country. Then I've been told these bags will be transported free of charge because it's part of your ticket cost. And to some extent, some airlines may refuse to accept some bags for free. So because of that, the fee for extra bags or bags that exceed the weight and the size limitation may be charged by the airlines. But the good thing, these charges vary from airline to airline. Each airline has their own ways of calculating their baggage allowance and the excess baggage fee. So the baggage fee that you pay for transporting excess bag will vary from airline to airline. So there are restrictions which are imposed by all airlines on the weight, length, width, and height of the bag. Extra bag or larger bag or heavier bags will either be refused to be transported or accepted with a fee known as excess baggage charges. I repeat, an excess baggage charge is the amount of money you will pay for transporting a bag that is too heavy, a bag that exceeds the permitted limit the permitted limit in terms of the size, in terms of the weight, and also in terms of the number of bags. So if you have been told you can only transport two bags for free, and you're having three, then the third bag will be considered as an excess bag. Then you have to pay for it. If you are told your bag should be 23 kilo, then when you measure your bag, you notice it's 28 kilo. So you can easily say your bag is too heavy. It is, a, it is an excess bag, whereby the remaining five kilo must be paid for. So the price an airline, the price of an airline ticket 
include the transportation of the passenger plus their bags. That is the checked bag and unchecked bag. So if you transport more than that, then you must add some amount of money in terms of the excess baggage charges. The GDS system will be able to give you the information that you need to know related to excess baggage per the airlines. So it is your duty to check and find out what are the restrictions under the GDS in relation to the amount of bag and the excess baggage charge that you can pay for the airlines. So we have some examples here. You can see this example. Example one is from American airline. Example two is for Iberian flight. Then example three is for Korea. So you have been told under AA, American Airlines, baggage allowance for passengers other than the children or military will be as follows. Cabin. Under cabin, then we have number of bags, then charges per bags. First class trucking business, you are allowed to have one to three bags free of charge. Premium economy, one to two bags free of charge. Economy, one to two bags, no charges. Economy class two, stock from Europe, one bag. Economy class two, stock from South America, El Salvador, two to three bags, no charges. Then the economy class, just general, you pay, you can carry two bags free of charge. When it comes to Iberian flight, free baggage allowance for passengers other than children, first class stroke, preference class of service, free baggage allowance will be two pieces. Two pieces will be transported for free, where some of the greatest outside linear dimension of each bag does not exceed 262 inches, that is 158 centimeters. Now, this one here is when you add length plus width plus height. It should not be more than 153 centimeters for first class. For business class and first class, that is the restrictions. For economy, executive, tourist, coach, and all these other small classes, they also allow two pieces. They allow two pieces where the sum of greatest outside the linear dimension does not exceed 106 centimeters. That is 270 centimeters. So when you add everything, then it should be within that limit. Korea, you can see the Korean part. I hope you can see the screen, Korean part. First class service, three pieces of bags with maximum dimension of 62 inches, that is 158 centimeters. The kilo is 32 kilo. So you can carry three pieces of bags when you're traveling with Korean Airlines. Iberia flight, only two, 32 kilo. American airline, only, it depends on where are you coming from. Where are you coming from? And where are you going to? Whether they may allow one to three, one 
or even two bags. So all this must be taken into consideration so that when you are explaining everything to your customer, your customer must understand what they need to do when it comes to the baggage. There's another example here, excess baggage carrier table, American airline. If you carry excess of what is shown above, then there is another limitation, another table that gives us some kind of charges. So for business class and fast, you can carry four to 10 bags. Then the Canadian dollars, US dollars, Euro, and Great Britain pound will be allowed, will be charged per their bags. So if you have six bags, then three will be free of charge, then three will be paid for. If you're from Canada, you pay 600. If you're from America, you pay 600. If you're from Europe, you pay 150 times three euros in that order. Economic class from Brazil, you can carry three to five because you're allowed two or three free of charge. So the third to the fifth, you have to pay the amount given down there. Economy class two stock from Ghana, India, Kenya, Nigeria, via London. On Ethiopian, on British, on British Airways and American Airlines only, you can carry from three to ten other bags. That's the economy. And each bag will be charged. So you can see the table and try to understand how much money you can carry per every bag you want to transport out of the country or into the country. Quote the excess baggage charges in Canadian dollar when exiting from Canada. US dollar for exiting in USA. Great Britain pound for exiting in UK and Euro for exiting in Europe, other part of Europe. So that's why you can see the figures in different currencies, depending on where are you coming from. So for Kenya, there's no Kenya shillings there. Reason the Kenya shilling is not internationally acceptable. So we use the US dollars. So if you're from Kenya, going out using BA or American Airlines, then every bag in excess, you pay 200 US dollars. So look at that table, two minutes. If you have any question, you can ask before you continue with our class. So one minute, look at the table, try to analyze the table. In case there's any question you want to ask, you can ask as we continue with our class. Two minutes for the table, very fast. So two minutes is done, so let's continue. Let's continue. So we, oh, there's a question here, okay. So what does it mean to 
star in the number of bugs. Let's see. So you can see the two stars here under Europe, economic class two stock from or via Europe. Now, when you go to the American airline up here, you have been told economic class two stock or via Europe, they only permit one bag. That's one bag. So meaning on the other side, they tell you any other two bags from the second bag on once you pay for it. So we have two, three, four, up to the fourth bag you pay. So those stars represent the numbers. Remember you're allowed only to carry one bag. So if you have one bag, it will be free of charge. The second bag, you have to pay for it. The third bag, you have to pay for it. And the fourth bag, you have to pay for it. But on the other side, they give you four, two, ten. You can carry up to the tenth bag. Meaning the first three is free of charge. Then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, until the tenth is when you pay for them. So the two stars will represent the number of bags you are carrying. That is the second, the third, and the fourth. Any other question? Okay, there's a question here. Any other question? Ask anything else before we continue. Okay, there's no question. Let's continue. Now, checked bag and baggage allowance for children. Now, children also can carry a bag. So the checked bag limitation is not only limited to the adult passengers, no. Children, including infants, may also have their own ways when it comes to baggage allowance. So in general, the free baggage allowance for accompanied and unaccompanied children is normally similar to that of adults. I will repeat. The baggage allowance for accompanied and unaccompanied children is normally similar to that of adults. So the adults will be allowed to carry a given number of bags, which will automatically be applied to children or to passengers above two years of age. Whether transporting with the passenger with the, an adult passenger or whether they are traveling alone. But when it comes to infants who are traveling at 10% of the fare and they are not occupying a seat, they are normally entitled to one piece of the bag, that's one bag, with a dimension of 115 centimeters and the weight of 10 kilo, not more than 10 kilo. This is an infant. An infant does not have a lot to carry because most of the things you carry them in your bag as an adult. But these infants will be allowed to carry one bag of 10 kg plus a fully collapsible stroller or a push, push chair or infant carrying basket 
or infants car seat. So they allow two things. One bag, 10 kilo, and a push chair for the kid. These are generally the guidelines only. It's advisable to consult the airline website to determine the baggage allowance for the children and infants. But remember, I've said, for children, whether accompanied or not accompanied, they carry the same same allowance per, as the adult. But for the infants, they'll be allowed one bag or one piece of 10 kgs plus a collapsible infant push chair. But this push chair will only be allowed subject to space availability in the cabin. But if you want to carry it in the whole fine, it will go. But if you want to have the chair, the push chair in the cabin, it will depend with the space availability. So as an agent, you must consult the airline to find out the allowances given to the children and the infants. So you have been told the key line point, children are entitled to the same free baggage allowance as adults, but for the infants, traveling for free may be allowed to check a bag as well as an items required by the children. That is the push chair. So you are allowed to carry one bag for the infant and a stroller or a push chair for the child. Now, when I told you earlier, the amount of bags will be will not be the same for the, every airline. The amount of luggage allowed per the airlines may vary. And the question comes, what if passengers are using different airlines that has different restrictions related to the baggage allowance? For example, you are using a top airline and Kenya Airways. And you notice that ET, it allows 30 kilo. Kenya Airways allows 23. So between 23 and 30, which one will you use? So as an agent, we must find out the calculation on which baggage allowance will be applicable for your passenger. That is, if the airline used charges or has different information related to the baggage. Now, the example given down here is very, very direct. It is when the passenger is traveling on an online type of transportation. From Sydney to Sydney, the airline use is only QF. So for that, the only conditions applicable for the baggage will be QF airline baggage allowance. So there is no problem on scratching your head on which type of baggage allowance to be applicable. Reason, there's only one airline that is being used for the transportation. And this airline's baggage allowance will be applicable for the entire journey. So the booking agents can find the QF baggage provision or allowances in the GDS system. Because that is the only airline used for the transportation. But when the passenger's journey requires an interline travel, which involves different airlines, then you must come up with a way to decide which airline's baggage allowance will be used. Now, this will take us to ticketing course. Remember, under ticketing, we talked about the most significant carrier. 
the carrier whose fares will be used to price the entire journey. So the same same procedure used to determine the most significant carrier per the fares will be used to determine the amount of luggage the passenger can transport. This is under IATA resolution 302, which defines the method used to determine which baggage allowance provision will be applicable when the journey is on what you call an interline transportation. Area one, as uh, Munira said, it has three class, uh, two classification. Under first classification, divides area one into three, into four regions. That's North America, Central America, Caribbean area, and South America. So it is your duty to understand which are the countries that makes up all those particular given region. Then the second classification divides area one into three sub areas based on the water body known as Atlantic. So we have Atlant North Atlantic, Mid Atlantic, and South Atlantic. When it comes to area two, area two is subdivided into three regions. That is Europe, where we have the Scandinavian countries and the European Union community. Then we have the Middle East, all the Arabic regions. Then we have the African. So when it comes to Africa, it is subdivided further into six subdivisions, that is Western Africa, Eastern Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, Indian Ocean, and Libya. Then area three, it has two classifications also. The first classification divides area three into four. That is the largest part of area three, that is Southeast Asia, followed by the South Asian subcontinent, where we have countries like Libya, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, in that order. Then we also have uh, Southwest Pacific, where you get countries like Australia, uh, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea. Then we have Japan, Korea, which consists of only three countries, North Korea, South Korea, and Japan. Then the second classification divides area three into two. Number one, we have North and Central Pacific, where we have the entire area three except Southeast Asia. Sorry, except Southwest Pacific. Then the, the southern part of the Pacific, we call it the South Park, where you get only the South. West Pacific countries. So once you understand all that, so when it comes to crossing, you can be able to understand the crossing from area one to area two and area three. Then the sub areas, you locate the areas within the sub area, within the same sub area to come up with the crossing. So it is our duty to understand the location of our journey so that we understand the way we need to cross. So in summary, this table gives you the subdivision of the three areas. We have area one, area two, and area three. So they try to give you samples of the three areas so that you can remind yourselves when it comes to the crossing, the sub areas and the areas. So up to that point, in case you have any question you can ask. Any question? Any question? So you have been told, understanding this teeth IATA areas is very, very important because it will help you as student to determine which airline to designate the most significant carrier in what you call interlining portions of the journey. So areas of the world plays a major role. Remember your teacher said for you to understand 
the how to calculate fares, you must make sure we understand the areas of the world. For you to identify the correct global indicator, we must understand the areas of the world. For you to come up with the correct fare, you must understand the areas of the world. And now, for you to determine which airline will be used to determine the the baggage provision for the trip, you must understand the areas of the world. So the area of the world plays a major role in deciding which airline will be used to, to take on baggage allowance. So you have been told, for travel between two areas, the airline transporting the passengers on the first sector that cross one area to another will be considered as the most significant carrier. So here, we are only going to use the first crossing carrier. We are not using the, the longest TPM carrier. We are using the most significant carrier by determining the first crossing carrier. So number one, when the journey is between two, two areas, determine which airline transport passengers from one area to another. For crossing the three areas, the first airline to cross from area one, from one area to another becomes the most significant carrier. So that is if you're from area one, two, three. So the first airline transport the passengers from area one to area two will determine the carrier. If you're from area three to one, then the first airline to transport passengers from area one, three to area two becomes the most significant carrier. For travel within the same area, maybe you are within area one, you are within area two, you are within area three. The first airline to cross from one sub area to another becomes the most significant carrier. If the journey is within the same sub area, maybe we are within the East Africa, then the first airline to transport passengers on the international sector becomes the most significant carrier. For journeys within the same country, maybe you are within Ethiopia, you are from Addis Ababa, Mekele to Gonda. So you are within the same, same country. The most significant carrier is the first airline that the passenger will check in the bag. Leunet Mefter, Alama Chino, Alama Kefto Dadari Mona Lebatu, the National Airways at Kubania, National Aviation College. Tratna Dara Jaun Yeta Beka Sultana Bamestat Bukuzega Yafarano. Buffalite operation, Bever Ramestangdo, Betiketing in a reservation, Botil in a tourism wealth as Sultan and Todadari Nadar Gutalan, College Achin, Canada Kamidenyo, International Air Transport Association, Ayatana, Kangalizu, ICM Gar Bamatabar, Alama Kafukanalo Sultana Yesate Genya. Buffalite operation, Bever Ramestangdo, Yemen Satacho Sultana, Kethiopia Civil Aviation Bala Sultan, Muluk and Nan. Adrasha, Kergola Gul Tower, Hyolet Tadabai, Wadashola Bemus Domangerlai, Ye National Airways at Kubania, National Aviation College, Hilmon, Uriadu.